Hi folks, it's Mike here and welcome back to the C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be revisiting functions, which we've talked about previously. If you remember, we've talked about just what functions are, how to pass in different arguments, and even that recursive functions are allowed. And in fact, we've also introduced this idea of a call stack, which is sort of where we keep all of our function information. In case we call one function after the other, they're stored on this special stack memory, all of our variables, the return address, and so on. So what I want to do actually, though, in this lesson is talk a little bit more about the semantics of how arguments are passed in functions. And this is something that's known as pass by value. Let's go ahead and do a little quiz here to test your understanding and to demonstrate this concept. All right. So what I've got here is just a little review of functions here and this idea that we store information on our call stack here, whether we're calling some function here, the next call and so on. And we can sort of move data on and off the stack in order from top to bottom, depending on how you want to visualize a stack. And what's important to realize is we use a stack because it's efficient and it's for data that's only going to live temporarily. Remember, just in that tiny block scope. So what I want to do is go ahead and just clear up this example that we have here and talk a little bit about some different semantics here. And this is what the lesson today is about, which is pass by value. And this is specifically referring to arguments. That is what we're passing into the function. How does data, for instance, in this program here, where I have one function called set value with one argument, how does that data get passed in from some other function? So for instance, for main here, I have an integer that I set to 42 because we should always initialize our variables and I print off the value stored in X in memory, the address abbreviated ADDR for address of X here with the ampersand operator, which we've learned about. And then I call our function, which takes in X and well, X is taken in here. And then we set that argument equal to 9999. And in fact, we could extend this by just saying, well, what is our actual value of the argument when it's passed in here? And let's go ahead and print that off. So arg is initially, and we'll print off the argument here. And then arg at the end is, well, whatever its value happens to be. And again, using these little print statements can be helpful for just debugging how our program's actually running here. And in fact, I'm going to put a little uh, slash T here and just put set value and a colon just so that we know that we're in the set value function here where I'm doing this work here. Okay, so let me go ahead and extend this so it fits nicely on the screen. So what I want you to do is to actually pause this video and try to see if you can figure out what is going to be printed at the end when we check X's value here. Go ahead and pause, do this exercise, and then I'll join us together again so that we can see what the actual result is. All right, did you do the exercise? In three, two, one, I'm gonna compile and run this code so you can see what the result is. So I'll recompile, clear the screen, and run our example here, and let's see what we have. Okay, very interesting here. So X's value is initially 42, which is what we've stored here. Remember, main is the entry point of our program. X's address is something, something, okay, ends in 5074. So we'll just kind of remember that. And then we call set value here. And we see that, well, initially 42 is the value of X here that's passed into this function here. And by the end, well, we set arg, which is, well, whatever, we passed in here, which was the value of X here, it is indeed 9999. But when I revisit the main function here, X's value is now, well, rather, it's still 42. It didn't get affected or changed by this function here. And in fact, that we, we can see that this is the same X that we had before. So what happened at this set value function call? And Again, this is the point of our lesson today. We pass by value here, our arguments. So just to give you a keyword, 
This means we, and let me do it in a different color, make copies of our arguments when passed in functions. And I'll kind of move out of the way so you can see that. So again, this idea that we're going to be making a bunch of copies of whatever our arguments are, whether we're passing in one, two, or 20 different arguments. So how can we first prove this? And this is a way I like to think about it so that you can really kind of internalize what it means when we're making a copy of something. Well, if it's the same piece of memory or the same variable, it must be that the address would be the same. So one way that I can do this, and I'll get rid of my printouts here, is let's just see what the argument value is here. So this is going to be args address. And let's go ahead and make sure we do the address of arg here. And again, if arg, that's this guy being passed into our function, is the same as x's address that we'll see here, then they must be the same variable. They must be changing the value to 9999 in the same place. Okay, so let's recompile, let's rerun, and we'll see x's address compared with the argument. Well, they are different. You can even just start from the last two numbers to do this comparison. And this is one of the debugging tricks where this ampersand operator comes in handy. So we can see that these are in fact different variables that are being passed around. That's because again, when we call our function set value, it makes a copy of x and is modifying that copy here. And then when we go out of scope, again, that's our curly braces here, our block scope for this function, then that value goes away. It is popped off of stack memory. So let me try to just visually illustrate this on our drawing board. Then I'll put the code up again and review what we've learned here. So again, we have our main program here. And we're doing some work here and we eventually call set value. Okay. And we have x equal to 42 and we pass in x. So again, at this point in our program, if I just sort of represent our memory here, this is our stack memory, stack memory. Then what happens is, well, when I'm in the main function, I have things like, well, where is the actual main function? But let's just worry about uh, this variable here. So I have x equals 42 on our stack. And then when I call set value, we're sort of in this other uh, stack frame here. And I'll just draw this as a box here so you can sort of think of it as a sort of separate unit here. But I have set value, which gives a copy of x here. And it has things like arg and it's initially equal to 42. And then eventually in our program, we set arg to 9999. But then when we finish executing this function here, we pop this off of the stack. So we get rid of it. And now we're back to, well, whenever we look at x, we're looking at the x that's part of main here. And that value still remains 42. Because we've gotten rid of our copy here. So our copy has been removed from our stack. So any changes that I make in set value, and let me go ahead back here, are not going to impact x's value. We might want to use x's value somewhere in this function because it's an input into our function and it might have some sort of meaning. But again, the changes that we make to this variable will not stay. And that's because we have pass by value by default in C++. So why do we like this? Well, it allows us to just have a few different variables and just make copies of them and not have to worry about if our data, that is x equals 42, gets mutated or changes the state. Now, there are ways, however, that we're going to talk about in an upcoming lesson to actually pass in values into a function and preserve those changes. All right. With that said, what we've learned about today is this idea of pass by value. This idea that when we pass things into functions, we're making copies of those arguments. And you can do this experiment yourself just to prove it by printing off the address of the variable that you're passing in. Now, we 
sometimes prefer to do this when we don't want to change what those variables are, but we are going to find a little caveat here where we pass by value. Where, well, since we're making copies of something, that takes time. So what if I'm passing in hundreds of gigabytes of information in some data structure? That means I have to make a copy, and that actually could be really expensive. So we're going to need some tools to avoid pass by copy, which C++ allows us to do. All right, folks, so I hope you enjoyed that lesson, learned a little bit about pass by value, or at least that this concept exists and it was helpful. If so, make sure, as always, to like and subscribe, and, well, we're going to see you in the next one. All right, take care, folks.